Today we're going to look at the structure of atoms. Here we have, for example, some carbon, some atoms of carbon. And if I was to pull out one of the atoms, so instead of zooming in, I'm actually pulling one of the atoms out, you might see that it looks a little something like this. Now, this is one atom of a uh, substance, and in this case it's carbon. But before we actually get into the detail of the different parts of it, I just want to have, have a quick look at the kinds of sizes that are involved when we're talking about atoms. Now, the first thing to remember is that, as if you didn't know already, atoms are very, very, very small. But how small are they? Well, we can actually give a number to the radius of an atom, and we're talking about 1 times 10 to the minus 10 meters. 1 times 10 to the minus 10 meters. Well, what does that mean? Well, that's the same as 0 0.000000001. 000 meters. That's very, very tiny. So if you were to try and imagine that, imagine you took a millimeter, so you can see a millimeter on your ruler. Imagine you were able to slice that into a thousand pieces. Each one of those pieces would be a micrometer, but you still have to divide that into another thousand and then you would get to your nanometers. But that's still a bit too big for atoms. We have to divide that again by another 10 and that's when you would get to the size or the radius of an atom. So they are absolutely tiny. Another way of uh, saying that measurement 10 to the minus 10 is 0 0.1 nanometers. So you can use either one of those two measurements to describe the radius of an atom. Now that's just the radius. Imagine you went down to the nucleus, that's even tinier, and you'll see that this, the scale on this diagram and pretty much every diagram you've ever seen is completely wrong because the radius is about one ten thousandth the radius of the atom. So that's absolutely tiny. So we're now talking a, a radius of a nucleus at about one times ten to the minus fourteen about 1 times 10 to the minus 14 meters, 1 ten thousandth of the radius. So you can see here, this diagram, the scale is totally wrong. But we can't draw the diagram to the right scale because if I drew a radius, an atom, uh, sorry, a nucleus with this radius, say it was one centimeter, I'd have to have 10,000 centimeters for the rest of the radius, and that's about 100 meters. We obviously can't do that uh, on one sheet or one screen. So we draw the atoms like this. Now. Now that we have an understanding of the sizes, what we want to get on with now is making sure we know the different parts of an atom. So we're going to actually label this atom, and there are five key words that you need to be able to put on a diagram like this. The first one is the nucleus, that's the part in the center there. And then inside the nucleus, we have two types of what we call subatomic particle, and those are protons and neutrons. The protons I've done there in red with a little plus sign, and the neutrons in green. Going around the nucleus are these things called electrons, and they go around on these things that we call shells. So they orbit around the nucleus on, the shell, on these shells. So we have these five key labels that you must know and remember, and there's a couple of extra details that we need to know about the protons, neutrons, and electrons. We have something called the relative charge. We also have something called the relative mass. And we can neatly put that onto a table. And for the relative charge for the proton, we have plus one. For the neutron, the charge is zero because it's neutral. And for electrons, it's minus one. Okay, we use the word relative because it's compared to each other. So the relative mass of a proton is one, neutron is one, and electron is very small. We can You can happily describe it as very small. If you want to know in slightly more detail, you'd say it's about one, two thousand of the mass of a neutron. Okay, so protons and neutrons have the same mass, we describe that as one. So what we're going to do now is actually look at how we would go about doing a diagram, or making a drawing of an atom with the right number of protons, neutrons, electrons, and so on. So let's pick out an example of sodium, and we can use the key on the periodic table here, so you'll get a periodic table like this in the exam with that key on it, so you don't necessarily need to memorize what these different things are, but you need to know what they uh, tell you about the atom. So we've got the relative atomic mass at the top there, we've got the atomic or proton number at the bottom, and along with that we've got the atomic symbol and the name 
in each one of those boxes. Now, the number at the bottom, the atomic number or the proton number, tells you two very important things. The first thing is it tells you the number of protons present in the atoms of that element. The second thing is that it identifies the element. So any anytime you see an atom that has a proton number of 11, it has to be sodium. It cannot be anything else. If you change the proton number, you change the elephant, uh, elephant element. So, for example, if I had a proton number of 5, that's going to be boron. 6 would be carbon. Another random one, I don't know, 37. That would be rubidium. And equally, magnesium would be 12. So those, So that proton number identifies the element as well as telling you the number of protons. The number at the, top, at the top is the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. So the relative atomic mass tells you protons plus neutrons together. And those, uh, as we're about to find out, are found, or no, sorry, as we've already covered, are found in the nucleus. Okay, so once we know that information, how do we go about drawing the atom? Well, we do need to remember where the different parts are. And once we know that we can then work out the number of each of these particles these subatomic particles protons electrons and neutrons and we can add them to our diagram so i always tend to use this kind of diagram here pen easy to remember pen and then we can fill in the numbers so remember the bottom number is the proton number that's very easy just copy that out that's 11 electrons very easy too the number of electrons in an atom is always the same as the number of protons they both carry opposite charges and they balance out in an atom. In terms of the number of neutrons, well, remember we said the number at the top, the atomic mass is protons plus neutrons. If we take protons off that, then we're left with neutrons. So the neutron number is 23 minus 11, which is 12. So the number of neutrons is now 12. We have the key bits of information to draw out this atom. Now, in this example here, Remember, the protons and neutrons are in the nucleus. So I'm going to just fill the nucleus in with the protons and neutrons. This is a bit long how I'm doing it. You won't be required to do it in such a long manner, but I'm just going to add them in just to show that what the actual atom would look like or a closer version of what it would look like. Okay, so we've got our 11 protons, 12 neutrons. Remember, they're not in a layer on top of each other. You could probably imagine it to be spherical, so... Uh, something like this but those are the protons and neutrons in the nucleus we then need to add on our electrons and we add, add the electrons to the shells there's a rule that you must follow the first shell has a maximum of two electrons the second and third shell you can add a maximum of eight electrons so we fill out the first one with two but we need a total of 11 electrons so we put two in the first a maximum of eight in the next so so far we have 10 we need 11, so we put one more in the outer shell there. And there we go. We have an atom of sodium with the correct number of protons, neutrons, and electrons. Okay, so we can just highlight that fact there. If it's the first time you've drawn an atom, there we go. But if not, this is how a reminder of how you would do it. Okay, so um, let's have a practice at another couple. So this is chlorine, and if we just... Put the relative atomic mass is 36 so we don't have to draw you do with half numbers you can draw it out you can pause here and draw it out for yourself but if not you can watch a second example and have a go at the next two on the next screen okay so we've got 17 protons 17 electrons and 36 minus 17 neutrons which is 19. so there's our key numbers and then we can just add those onto the diagram i'm not gonna uh, make it long like it did in the last slide I'm just going to write 17 protons, 19 neutrons in the nucleus, and then add on our electrons. So maximum of two in the first, eight in the second gives us a total of 10. We need a total of 17 altogether. So we add seven in the final shell. Uh, we can draw the electrons as crosses like that, and usually we draw them in pairs. It's not wrong if you don't draw them in pairs, but that's just how we tend to do it. So here's hydrogen and argon. Give these a go and see what you come up with. Okay, so for our hydrogen, one electron, one proton, and no neutrons. So we can very simply draw the nucleus, add our one proton, there's no neutrons. One shell, because we only need one electron. So there we go. For our argon, that's a slightly bigger atom. So 
we would fill in our details as before 18 protons 18 electrons and 22 neutrons which is 40 minus 18. so we draw our nucleus first looks like we're going to need three shells so we can draw the three shells in okay that's terrible let's wave a magic wand and tidy that up there we go so we've got 18 protons and 22 neutrons in the nucleus and then we can add on our electrons so two and eight makes ten then another eight in the final shell that gives us 18. so there we go some key information about the labels on an atom the sizes of an atom and how we draw atoms out so thank you for watching and i'll see you again soon